y'all, this is R&B Divas LA Season 2, Episode 8. Now, if you just want to see the, the full episode, that's fine. It's down below in the description box. So, hit your girl up with a like because I hooked you up, all right? I was looking out for you, all right? Only for you. <laughs> all right, so we're going to talk about this, and I'm going to try to keep it short, okay? It wasn't that much that happened. It, actually, the episode seemed kind of quick to me. So, we're just going to go ahead and talk about it. So, basically, it start off, Lila James is going to meet up with a new tour manager, She's trying to, you know, hire this young lady because her tour manager did whatever and dropped the ball. So she tells her tour manager, well, the lady that she's interviewing, she tells her, well, you know, I never worked with a woman before. Do you think you can handle all the responsibilities that's coming? Because you're not only my tour manager, you got to pay bills, you got to be a nanny, you got to be my security. You need to be superwoman, basically. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's that's fine. She's like, okay, well, I'm not used to having a, you know, you, you are, you are, you a woman. And the men in my band, some are five five and shit. They like, they can pick you up. So, you know, we're going to try this out, all right? And she's like, yeah, sure, I, I can handle the job. So then they get to practice. She asks one of her band members, Okay, um, what's going on? Why is nothing set up? Well, I don't mean to be, you know, putting nobody under the bus. But she's like, well, go ahead and put them under the bus. And he's like, well, you know, ain't nothing been done because the tour manager's not here. She ain't been doing, you know, getting anything done. She hasn't did anything. So Leela has to worry about performing and getting everything done. She's you know, hooking up mics and all kind of shit she shouldn't be doing. Hooking up mics, all kind of stuff. And trying to get ready for her performance. And then she goes talks to somebody else. Um, I'm not sure exactly who they were. But, you know, they was like, have you heard from the tour manager? And he was like, yeah, well, she told me that um, I guess she was running late or some shit like that. And Lee was like, well, she did not tell me. And, you know... How you want a job, but you ain't even here. And this just look bad. I'm going to tell, tell you right here. This look bad, because if anybody watches this show, anybody watch this episode, especially that's the artist, and they going to be like, oh, no, bitch, you left her hanging. You can't work for me. This is real bad publicity for her, okay? So they go to, you know, Lila has her show. And she got that deep voice, y'all. I don't even know how she got... <laughs> I can't even do it. I can't do it, y'all. Her voice is so deep, and it's it's so... It's different. It's very different. Um, I wouldn't exactly um, listen to her, even though I like her. I wouldn't exactly, you know, listen to her type of music because um, I don't feel her voice like that. Now, in a Puerto Rico song, her voice was... It was interesting. It almost sounded like she was, you know, Spanish. But I wasn't feeling it, but she did do, you know, great as, you know, her event and perform well. And she even had, you know, her adrenaline was pumping so much, she just jumped down on the, the stage and started doing push-ups. I'm like, okay, Lila, everybody was feeling it, though. Who knows, maybe if I saw her perform, I would probably like it because I love to be entertained. I love good performances. So, you know, who knows? She could persuade me to like her music if I saw her live in concert, maybe. And, okay, so we're moving on. So next is Claudette. Claudette is working on um, different music. Actually, the girls, Claudette, Michelle, and Little Mo, they go out and they talk, and they talk about getting their music together. And um, Claudette has never been solo before. She's been featured on people's songs, but she's never been um, a solo, solo artist. And she hasn't had an album out or any music out in the past 10 years. So... You know, Little Mo is like, wow, yeah, that's that's serious, but it's just, it seems like it's harder, 
you know, it's harder to reinvent yourself to come back out after you've been gone for a long. It seems like it's harder than that than being a new artist. And Michelle was like, look, I don't know what y'all talking about. I've been gone way longer than y'all. And my expectations are very, very high. So it's a lot of pressure. And, you know, basically it's like they, you know, trying to compete with each other. But Claudette tells them, like, well, my problem was, I'm excited, but my problem is that, um, I can't exactly find my, my own sound. Now, there's plenty of music they play for me, and I'll be like, that's hot, let's sing it, but you can't sing every song, you have to find your, your own sound. You know, it has to be you, it has to be Claudette. So, you know, I, I guess that's, yeah, I, I get what she's saying. She does need her own sound. And maybe she just needs to start trying to write her own songs. Um, you know, even though I'm into songwriting like that and I don't want to take nothing out of no songwriters pockets, but maybe she doesn't need to just sing everything everybody throws her way. Maybe she just needs to try to sing what's on her her heart or whatever. So they go on to um, Claudette shooting a video for this song that they picked, and it was called I'll Do You One Better. And she had on this suit in the video, and her titties was all out. I'm like, Claudette ain't got no bra. She got a bit, some big ass titties. <laughs> she got some big ass titties. I think she might have needed a bra. Cute bra. If she wanted to show that, that was fine. But you can just tell the titties was all out and went no bra on it. It was a lot. Anyways. So, next we go on to Shantae. Shantae is practicing for a performance. And she's singing, and I'm like, you know, I'm playing Spades as I'm watching this, but I'm like, this song's slow as hell. And then she stops, you know, one of her, her band members, and she's like, well, um, you know, I, I think it's going too fast. I need you to, to slow down some. And then, you know, I think her manager called her down, was like, come, come sit down. Like, what's, what's going on with you? And now uh, you can tell something ain't right. Especially for her to be saying, the song going too fast and it's slow as hell. And she asked her, like, what, what's, what's going on with you? Because that song was slow. She was like, it was? She was like, yes. It, it was pretty slow. <laughs> and she's like, well, I'm just, you know, I feel a sharp pain going down my spine and, and, you know, just telling her how her body's feeling. And she was like, well, you're not going to like this, but I'm going to have to call the paramedics. And she's like, no. She's like, yes, I'm going to have to call the paramedics. So they call the paramedics, come, and, you know, she lets them know she's in pain. And she ends up going to the doctor. And the doctor's like, well, look. You got some, basically, some, um, vertebrates that are, you know, it's fucking up, basically. That's what I'm going to say. And we can give you an epidural, but it can last for a day. It can last for a month. It can last for a while, but we don't know how long it's going to last. And we can't keep giving you epidurals because we don't want to give you an infection or anything like that. That can be pretty dangerous, which you're going to need is surgery and if you don't get surgery you know you could be in pain for the rest of your life your arm might not feel the same you don't want to be in that position and Sean says like well I can't we're gonna do the epidural I can't I can't do surgery right now I'm a single mom and I have to work you know they're dependent on me I, I have to work he's like all right we're gonna give you epidural but if it doesn't get any better or you start having pain again, then you gonna have to get the surgery. So next, Shantae goes to her performance, and she's backstage with the divas, and she's telling them about how she's on epidural, and that she might, you know, the doctor said that she might have to get surgery, and the ladies are concerned. They like, well. I I don't think you need to be going out on stage performing, jumping up and down, and you got pinched nerves and all kinds of stuff. You can make things worse. 
she was like, well, I, I got to work. I don't have any other choice. I go out. So she goes out there on stage. And I guess that April Dura was feeling real good to her, honey, because she was freaky, okay? Any man that was in the audience, she was singing to him. She would tell him to, to sing like, touch my body. <laughs> he was like, can I touch your body? And then she put, put some old ass man on the stage. And basically, like, she was about to give him a lap dance. And, you know, he's loving it. Like, and everybody else is in the crowd looking like Shantae is <laughs> on some good drugs, okay? Because she's out of it. And, you know, she's playing with him for a while. And then she starts to go back into her set and she sings or whatever. Next thing you know, Claudette and the rest of the divas are having, uh, setting up a birthday party for Shantae because Shantae's birthday is coming up. So, once they set everything up, and it looked nice, they had, like, some good-looking donuts. It kind of made me hungry. But, <laughs> anyways... Shantae comes over, she's with her pastor, and her pastor's husband, and her manager, and her manager's husband, and she's with some guy named Roy. So, Shantae's being goofy, she's playing around, she turned up, all that. So, later on, they asked, it was like, um, Shantae, I just want to ask you one thing, she's like, what? And it was like, who this man? <laughs> How about who this man? And she was like, this is a Roy. And Roy makes me feel like a natural woman. <laughs> and it was like, okay, um, Shantae. And she was like, yes, Roy. Oh, Roy. And they're like, Shantae, a preacher is here. <laughs> and she was like, she, I think she, that Ebrador is still good to her. I think she needs to hurry up and get that surgery because she can't be this freaky and horny all the time because she on this Ebrador. She got to get this shit over with. I didn't even know that Ebrador make you horny. I just thought it, it takes away the pain and that's it. But she is some, some freaky shit, some high mood. And that's basically it for that episode. Oh, I forgot to mention that they went to the studio with Warren Campbell and played the Puerto Rico song, and it was actually good. Even though it had six different voices on it, it was it was very interesting. You know, it was, I guess, I don't even know how to explain it. It was interesting, but it had so many different dynamics of it. It wasn't too much, but it was, it was just the... Um, just the the right amount. They cannot go over it. Going over would have been too much. But it was fine. It was interesting. They had all these different kind of, you know, beats onto the song to go with the different moves because, you know, they had, um, Jamie Chalet doing Diamond Summers and Little Mo rapping and, and Chrisette starting off and then they had, um, Leela with her deep voice on there. So it was a, it was a very interesting song. So that's it for this episode. <laughs> for, you know, reviewing this episode, like, share, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Jazz Chapman and the annotation will be up at the top. All right, of this video. And go ahead and, and check out my, my cooking channel, Cooking with Jazz Chapman. And y'all be easy. All right. Peace.